Greetings, everyone. Today, I'm excited to share with you three procedural generation products I've done in Unity and lessons I've learned along the way. Learning to code with high motivation, understanding how to apply theory in practice, and improving my time management skills. These are some things I've learned the hard way, so you don't have to. I'll outline how I went from being able to code things by following tutorials, to applying some changes myself, and eventually to being able to develop features from references and more abstract resources online. This will be done by going over three procedural projects I created over the years. A 2D terrain generation tool with monuments, a copy of the map system in Slay the Spire, and a working progress 3D island generation tool inspired by Oscar Stolberg. I have been writing code using Unity for quite a while now, but I started off with small projects back when I was in high school. I barely knew how to write basic C sharp back then, but retrospectively I'm happy I found an immersive way to learn. Procedural generation projects were simply interesting, which helped me push through the initial inertia. I even used to start my PC on some mornings just to turn on TeamViewer and remote access it on my laptop during class to work on game dev. One of the first larger projects I completed was a 2D terrain generation tool following a tutorial by Sebastian Log. It was my first time implementing procedural generation and it used Perlin noise to create continuous terrain. It looks visually nice and helped me understand how random data could be constrained into coherent output. Even though it was cool to complete something, I felt more proud of the contributions that were mine. I had adapted his 3D tools to produce 2D output and even attached a tool to place monuments on different levels with Poisson disk sampling. The lesson being that to really learn and be motivated with something, I felt it had to be immersive and engaging to get the most out of it. The next time I ran into procedural generation was after playing the game Slay the Spire. I was inspired to try recreating their system for their roguelike map. The game was simple and sweet, with a great gameplay loop, but there was something special about the map. Choices felt impactful, and strategizing for different situations was possible. This was the first challenge I faced coding, where I did not have a tutorial to guide me. I had to apply things I had learned, and analyze how the software I wanted to recreate worked. At this time, I was taking basic data structures and algorithms course at my university, and equipped with some confidence from this, I started to think of weird ways to model the map's data structure and an algorithm to generate it. This was quite naive and retrospectively a bit over-engineering for the problem at hand, but naming the map a directed acyclic graph with all nodes that had no outwards edges pointing to the same end node felt interesting at the time. I quickly however learned that game development really is not the most abstract field in computer science. And even though there are many useful things to learn from abstract data structures and algorithms, how to model simple problems is not one of them. This became blatantly obvious when I found a post from the Slay the Spire devs describing how the map was implemented, and in my post over engineering depression after having found a simple solution, I quickly got the map done, it was only downhill UI implementation after that. Back to current times, I am working on generating 3D maps to use as the base for my 3D pixel art stuff. I ran into Oscar Stolberg's creations online, and I was inspired to create something similar. In short, I have been having a rough time with it for the past few months, but through this I feel like I have learned some valuable lessons. For the longest time, when I'm working on harder problems, I've hit my head against the wall until everything works. Full caveman. However, now that I'm figuring out something that has multiple parts that need to communicate, the parts fail at design. They have no established ways of communicating with each other, and expanding the features is close to impossible. The designing of a system should not be done at the halfway mark, but instead at the very beginning. Successful project management never gets any praise, but awful planning is easy to find at fault. 
Early on, I found an existing GitHub repository that had an implementation of the algorithm on it. I initially just discarded it as I wanted to code something that is mine, however I feel like that was a careless mistake where my ego got the best of me. I started to think about why do I feel specifically proud of creating something on my own instead of solving it with help and existing solutions. It really did not make sense to me as for what I will accept help for and where do I feel like something is created by me. I accept help from Unity who provide me with a game engine, Microsoft who provide me with C-sharp and my operating system, Intel who provide my silicon, and the thousands of people in the supply chains. Why do I not feel compelled to do everything from the ground up myself, to feel proud, but still make arbitrary rules on the software level? Not even taking into account the thousands of years of science that developed the technology and agriculture that let people specialize. Computer scientists truly stand on the shoulders of giants, and what's wrong with continuing the tradition? Now I restarted this project with a few design principles. I'm going to use existing solutions, and I'm going to design the communication between the parts from the get-go. I feel this will save a great amount of time in future projects, as well as this one. With this new perspective on creating things, I feel that I have to change my feelings around what about creating features feels satisfying. Before I felt happy that I have created something on my own, with a bit of shame in having copied parts from others. Now instead, I'm beginning to understand that there is no shame in accepting help from others to create something that is greater than the sum of its parts, with credit given where it's due. The Dunning-Kruger curve, however, does feel more circular than ever. Leave a comment if you have any lessons to share, like and subscribe if you are interested in more. Thanks for watching and helping me reach 1k subs. Bye.